In this video, I'll be taking you through how for the IGCSE Cambridge Geography Paper 4 paper, Geographical Investigations, any question that comes up that requires you to have a knowledge of pedestrian traffic counts, you can use this video to help you respond to those questions. So the purpose of this video really is to give you an outline of both of those methods, general points to consider and emphasize the importance of practicing. Paper 4, the unique elements of Paper 4, are specific content you have to know is about the method itself whereas the rest of the paper in terms of um, answering hypothesis questions data presentation questions geographical theory is all is all skills that it comes through practice so to recap why i'm doing this method only and not doing a full-blown rivers coastal weather and instruments um, videos that i have done in other contexts um, really human investigations uh, tend to use similar methods and because there are too many variations of a human investigation with too many themes, focuses, um, it's important that it's much easier to focus on the actual method and the specific points of the method. And with those, you can adapt them to the hypotheses, to the investigation, which is why with this video, alongside a, a past paper, you really need to practice. So what is a pedestrian or traffic count? Both of them are counts to gather data on a number of pedestrians or vehicle using a particular route or passing through an area. It is often used to study patterns or movements, uh, or, sorry, patterns of movements in urban areas and to analyze traffic flow. And if you don't know what a pedestrian count looks like or traffic count looks like, you have an example there. And here's what it looks like completed. So how would you go about carrying out a traffic or pedestrian counts? So it all starts off with hypotheses. So these are a range of hypotheses that have been um, seen there. Let's have a little reads. And if you start looking at them, you can see that really a hypothesis can compare areas to see which has main traffic type, main vehicle type, main area that has a higher pedestrian flow than others. It, use, it might be used as supporting evidence for a, a wider hypothesis. Um, and it can also be used to show change throughout the day of transects. So very similar to other forms of investigations for human methods. Now remember that a traffic count and the pedestrian count are counts. They use the same method. The only difference really is that for a traffic count, you tend to categorize the vehicle types, the traffic that you are doing with pedestrians. It's just people walking, generally speaking, unless you state otherwise. But for traffic, you add that extra categories of vehicle types. So these are what um, examples of uh, recording sheets for traffic counts and generally speaking you complete them using a tally most of the recording sheets have some sort of site number location or place that you might need to circle you have to state usually the time of collection a space to do a tally you have a total number at the bottom and if you're doing a traffic count then you would add the category um, and you would complete it simply like this so for example a question asks you to record uh, using the data from table 2.3 on the right hand side complete the recording sheet so you work out how the tally is made four lines and then the fifth is diagonal and then you plot the points and copy what they have done so 10 4 3. so the you one question that i've seen uh, requires you to actually draw a table to do a recording sheet for a pedestrian count so this is what you would do if it was a pedestrian count, site number, time of collection, pedestrian count with a significant space to do your tally and a total number at the bottom. And you can see what the mark scheme required you to do. So that's what a pedestrian count recording sheet would look like. Remember, before we go on to the actual method itself, what a pilot study is. So if you, this is taken, this is not related to a pedestrian count or traffic count, but it's relevant for this. So why would you do a pilot study? Essentially, it's to make sure that we can assess um, if a full scale study can take place, if it's safe and accessible the locations, we need additional costs. We can familiarize ourselves with the method and how we go about categorizing the vehicles, etc. And so it also gives you the experience of working as a team. So that's why we would do a pilot study for traffic and pedestrian counts. And then also we need to identify risks and how you can go about minimizing them. So for pedestrian counts, you know, you're going to be out during the day. So if it's cold, wear jackets, look at the weather. So if there's a possibility of rain, check the weather forecast, might be an umbrella. Time of day as well, is it safe doing it at night? Rush hour, there might be loads of fumes. Could you get lost? How can you stop that? And are they accessible and safe? So 
Would you do a pedestrian count in the middle of the road? No, you would do it on the pavement. So traffic count. Now, um, I've only seen this for traffic count, not pedestrian count, but if you are a chance, the March 2017 paper is a very, very good paper for you to practice the methods of doing a traffic count. So recap, this is what a traffic count data collection recalling sheet would look like. Um, so here's some questions as well, but what are the important features of a traffic count? So here, well, the first thing is traffic, not pedestrians, so we can get rid of that. Um, students should always be in groups, not by themselves. Almost impossible unless you've got some very to measure speed using the stopwatch because you need distance as well to do that um, and time of what you're going to do. So almost impossible. Uh, Italian method. Yes. Identify every fifth vehicle. Good luck if it's busy. Good luck if it's fast moving traffic. So these are the two that you would do. Another one. Um, how can you make sure it's reliable? So. Why would you all start collecting the data at the start of the same start, same start time, the same finish time if you're working in groups spread around the city? To be fair. Obviously, one direction might be more might be busier than another, particularly if it's rush hour. Students need to agree on the different different categories where everyone is counting the same, same type of vehicle. A tally method is easy and quick to help keep an accurate number. And really, we keep a data recording sheet for each site because then you can plot that data and then analyze. So this is why we do it, to make it reliable. So how would we go about collecting, writing about a fieldwork method for a traffic count? So these are two questions. And what I wanted you to do, as written in the blue box, is it's important that you focus on the hypothesis because what the hypothesis says will affect how you structure your response. So for example, do they tell you the number of sites? So if it tells you they've done the groups with over six sites, put that into your answer. Does it mention time and days? Again, put those into your answers. And are the instructions written on the resources that could be included in your response? So if you've seen previous examples, they mention things like circle your answer, circle the time of day, or make sure you write that in your response. So if we look at the mark schemes, you can see there are some common points between them. These are spread over as a year difference. So again, these are common points. So we're going to put those into our answer. So I might write something for the first one, something like this. The silent and different methods of transport that should be counted, working in small groups, um, using Italian methods, record each time on the data collection sheets. And then you've got students counting the different flows in different directions. And they make sure they start collecting and stopping collecting the data at the same time. So again, ticking all the mark box in the mark scheme. And again, very, very similar here. So it's all about how you plan to organize the groups and then how you go about collecting that data. This one's a practice question for you to do, uh, taken from a bit more recent year. And uh, again, just shows you how for five marks quite a straightforward question for you. So you might want to pause the video now and have a go at answering that question. Here's the mark scheme once you have done to check your response. Again, you can see very, very similar um, uh, points there. And interestingly, they talk about collecting it for 30 minutes. But again, that is written on the data collection recording sheets. So moving on, um, some difficulties that students might have, how you can make it, why they only did 10 minute intervals. So again, secondary data, why the problems collecting traffic. And again, these apply to pedestrians. Is it rush hour? So it might be hard to count all of the people, vehicles, particularly if there's a group. Um, you might lose concentration if it's for a long period of time. And sometimes it can be hard to categorize different vehicles. So some points to consider there. Again, you can apply these easily to pedestrian counts and then why did you collect it for 10 minutes but again long enough for reliable data not get bored or affected by fumes or get sunburn so this part is for pedestrian counts not as many questions in the past past papers going back to 2016 as there were for traffic but again similar points that you can use for traffic equally apply to pedestrian counts so this is what's from a previous question a typical 
pedestrian counts data collection sheet would look like. So how would you go about collecting data? Remember, it's about planning and then carrying out the count. So these are two questions. Again, very similar points if you look at the mark schemes between each one. So when it comes to writing a response, we can write a generic one that looks something like this. Very detailed, I know. So again, practice, maybe abridging this, but this would be a model answer for a pedestrian count. So likewise, data presentation questions. Um, the range of techniques could be used, copy the style that they've uh, used in past. The other examples have been done, use a pencil. And again, practice, practice, practice. Any past paper will have 12 marks, usually more or less 12 marks associated with data presentation techniques. So again, do practice them. Um, and uh, again, they might be associated with calculations as well. Um, for gestion counts, these are the types of methods they use. And I've got a video here that you can see that applies to all data present techniques or as many as I can find. So please, if you still want some more help, use that, um, that video here that you can just see from my channel. It's in the same playlist as this. That would be useful as well. So typical questions might be that you know, for traffic counts, they've categorized the vehicles for each particular count. So you need to plot those categories. So portional bar graph here, divided bar graph. Um, again, work out the scale. So we know that one small square equals two vehicles and copy exactly what the key shows and always double check. So first one, 104. Then you've got the van minibuses for um, 18. Then you've got the lorry coach at 13. So you would do something like this. You would do this in pencil. I've done this in red because it's easier to see on my screen. And likewise, again, you might have to do a little bit more of an interpretation of the data for a mark or two. So here, uh, what was this time where the number of lorries, buses and coaches were more than the number of vans and minibuses? So look at the data and you can see that it's 10.30 to 11 o'clock. Another one might be proportional shapes. And again, it's about you um, looking at the data of what you need to plot, all of the information, and then before you get going, you check out the scale of how that arrow has been drawn here. So you can see it's one centimetre for 500 uh, vehicles. So we have to draw 501 vehicles and then we use figure 1.1 for the direction. So we have to draw it in a south direction, which is slightly off south. And so you draw an arrow that looks something like this. Simple line graph with a, some little points at the ends. So if I zoom in. 73 and 30, 76 and 30, copy exactly what they've done using the scale. So one small square equals four vehicles, copy exactly what the key shows, always double check. So I'm gonna draw a little line going up to uh, 76 and then down to 30. Again, I've done this in red, so it's easier for you to see, but straightforward for some marks. And then another one, uh, which one of the following will be another suitable method to show the results of total traffic numbers? Um, out of all of those, I would do flow lines on a map. And so if we move on to the next question here, you can show what flow lines are if you are unsure. So flow lines or ISO lines are lines that connect points of the same value. So in this case, it could be pedestrian counts. So this is the following on question from the previous question. Um, they ISO lines when data is labeled. So think console lines upon paper two, exactly the same um, concept there. So how would you do it? Well, I'm asked to plot on the 200 pedestrian count. So I need to find a line or a point that is above 200. So in this case, I'm gonna use the 300 one and I've got a site number that's 106. So what I need to do is find roughly where along that straight line 200 would be. So it'd be somewhere like there. And again, I would go around looking for sites that are or lines that are above and below 200 and then um, put the point dots and then connect with a smooth line. So here, 200, constantly going around, plotting where I think 200 is. I then connect with a smooth line and there we go. So again, look at my other video for data presentation te techniques to help you practice those. If not, pause, rewinds but it's important that you practice. 
Then moving on um, to data hypothesis questions as well. So you know these are questions where you've been given a hypothesis and you have to use the data presented to you to say if it's true, false, or partially true. Um, this is a very common question that appears across all of the all of the exams, all of the um, questions for both sides. And again, this is a strategy. This is a technique of how you go about answering it. First thing you do is you look at the hypothesis and you find out what is it saying. Does it tell you about a change along a transect or change in area? You then need to find the evidence to support that statement. And if you can't, then it's false. Or you look at the hypothesis and find out has a conclusion already been made. So has the student seen it's partially true or false? And then again, you find the evidence to support either the hypothesis and if it does, you've obviously proved it to be false or to prove the statement the student has made. So for this video, uh, sorry, for this question, it asks you to say, has this hypothesis been proven true or not? So you've got the mark scheme here. And so you can see you get one mark for stating is that hypothesis correct or true. I prefer using the language true because that's widely used across all of the past questions. So the first thing you write is whether or not that hypothesis has been proven true or false. Then you find evidence to support that. And you can see here, this is the evidence I've used to show that change throughout the day, because that's what the hypothesis is trying to prove. So I have to get data to show that change throughout the day. And I've done that by looking at um, start of the day, end of the day for the overall trends using the total numbers. And then because it's how it varies, I've chosen a particular time to show when it was the maximum and then when it was the minimum. Here, like I said, the student has um, already made a decision that it was partially correct. So I'm looking for evidence to support why they made that. And again, I've got a little bit of extra information here about reference to any anomalies in the results. So this is something I would say that yes, it's partially true because overall the data from site A to site F is a decrease, site A has higher data than site F, but there is variation between the sites to arrive at site F. And so I would show that in my response and you can see what I've written there. And this is the mark scheme. And then following on from those uh, data analysis questions about if you've proven or not, you then might get some questions that ask you to look at you know, why there is variation or why there might not be variation, or in the case that you can see here, something quite random about a bypass road. So you can see that a lot of these questions draw on paper one knowledge and content. So I'm not gonna go in too much about it, but you can see here, a lot of it is kind of common sense and you can see where it applies. So as long as you've done good revision for paper one across all of these sort of human themes, settlement population and theme three, you should be able to easily access these questions. Thank you for watching and um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. Um, if you like it, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel and then share it with your friends if you think they'll also find it useful. But remember, these videos work by you opening up a past paper and using this video as a reference if you are unsure about how to approach the questions. Thank you once again.